This is Corey Lamley with Life in the Grid, and in this 12-minute video, we'll be running through how you can use Google's free page speed analysis tool to enhance the speed of your site and how to read its metric suggestions. For a full analysis of page speed optimization, stay tuned to the end of the video where I'll give you a link with more information on page speed. So now that Google takes page speed into consideration as part of its search engine algorithm, it's important that we make sure that our website is returning pages as fast as they can be returned. We can now figure out what our page speed is with a set of tools that Google has provided for free online. Just jump out to Google and do a search for page speed and you'll see it's the first result that you get. Go ahead and click on this result and you'll see that there's two different options for installing the page speed performance analysis tools. The first one is a Chrome extension, which is also available in Firefox. The second one is actually a online page that you can browse to and enter in your URL. I'll be demonstrating the page one in just a second, but let's go ahead and look at the Chrome extension. Now I've already installed the extension on my box and I can view it by right clicking on the main page and coming down here to inspect element. And as what this does is this just opens up a set of developer tools that allow you to look at information on your page. Now over here on the very right hand side is the button for page speed. And if I click this, it'll begin to show me the uh, page speed uh, tool. Now in order to see the page speed of this particular page, I'm going to want to click this run page speed button. And as what this does is this goes out and does an analysis on this particular page. And as what happens is it returns a score, as we can see here, which is a 93 out of 100. So the higher your score, the better. And as what Google does is it takes this score and uses it as part of its algorithm to help you rank your page speed. And there's a whole set of um, criteria that it begins to anal analyze and look at for your particular page. And as you can see, anything that's in red, which I don't have any right now, anything that's in red would actually be something that you would want to look at. Yellow is um, caution and everything that is in green means that you're doing really well. And if you click on each one of these categories, it does a breakdown analysis of all the things that you need to do or the things that you have done in order to make this page fast. So that is a quick overview of using this particular tool internal and it's great for using it on say a development box or a local host box if you want to test that way and you can also use it on a live site. So let's go ahead and close this down and I will jump over to the page speed online tool in just a second. So here we are on the page speed online version and I entered my URL and submitted it. The first thing that I want to do is go and check out the summary. The summary gives a start page score rank, which for me right now is sitting at 76. Now I've disabled certain performance features on my website in order to allow certain suggestions to show up. I want to cover these suggestions in detail because they're some of the most important that many people overlook. Now in this video, I won't be going over how to implement a lot of these changes. I'll just be explaining what they are and how they impact your site. In part two of this series, I'll be explaining how you can implement strategies on your own WordPress blog or website so that you can address these specific suggestions. So let's go ahead and start to look at each one of them. So right now, the first one is enable compression. If I click on enable compression, it'll show me all the files on my site that have not been compressed and sent over the wire. Now why is this important? Because every single file that comes across the wire from my site needs to be in the most smallest compressed format. And um, what uh, gzip and deflate do for you um, on IIS or Apache is they actually will zip up in a sense these files and before they're actually sent over the wire, they're compressed and it, this will help cut down on bandwidth and create a much faster um, overall performance for the people making requests to your web page. Now the next section is combined images into sprites and we'll click on this one here. Now this one is best actually understood by looking at an example. You can't really see without looking at an example of this. And what a sprite is, is it's, um, 
uh, developers have come up a, with a way to actually put all the images into one file. So they'll take all their images and compress them down into one single image. And then as what they'll do is they'll use CSS style sheets to individually locate each one of these um, images and show only that image. So for example, if you had say all of these images showing up on one page and they were single images, then you'd be making a request for this one, this one, this one, this one, and so forth and so on, which is a lot of requests to your web server. But if you have them all in a sprite, then it makes a request to one image and then you use the CSS to display them properly. So again, it's all about making fewer requests from your web page. Now the next section that we're going to look at is called inline small CSS. And what this does is this actually goes out and it looks at the different CSS calls that are on your site. And if any one of these calls are very small and we look at it, this is relatively small. So look at this as maybe only 20 lines of CSS. Well, most CSS uh, files for a site can be up to two, 3,000 plus lines. And this is what they're saying is they're saying don't pull down a resource with such a small amount of CSS. Take this CSS right here and combine it with one of your other CSS larger files so you're making fewer requests. Now the next section is optimize images. And what this is saying is there are actually tools out there that you can run over an image and actually reduce its file size. And so I'll be showing that in a subsequent video. And the, the idea here though is that there are images on your site that can actually be compressed even further. So for deferring parsing of JavaScript, it's a pretty technical subject and I can't go into all the details of how it works. But one of the things that I can actually talk about here and the thing that you're going to want to look at is the size of your JavaScript file. If you start to see a JavaScript file sitting above four or five hundred kilobytes or maybe even a meg then you'll definitely want to question that file because that JavaScript file has to be pulled down to the browser and then compiled uh, pretty much on the browser so those are some things that you can look for from that perspective now the next section here is leverage browser caching and is what this is saying is it's saying that some of these objects in here have a short cache time and you can actually up the cache time so that, that every time a request is made for these it, once it's originally made from the browser that it's not going to keep pulling this request down from your server it'll actually put it on the browser and keep it there so there are techniques that you can use to actually um, increase the time of specific resources that are being pulled from your server. The next section is minimize redirects. And as what this section is saying is it's saying, hey, look at this particular URL. Whenever it makes a request, is actually making another request out to this URL. And the thing to take away from this particular page is that if you see just a ton of these, you know, you scroll down and there's just a whole bunch of these redirects, then you're going to want to start to evaluate um, your pages. Now, most of these are actually um, usually tied to affiliate links or some other resource that you're pulling down. So if you have a few of them, they're not that big a deal. Just be cautious if there's a whole lot of them. Now the next section is called minimize uh, or minify JavaScript. And is what this is saying is if we look at one of these files, say for example, this particular file here, we'll see that um, it's fully um, formatted and it's usually formatted so that a developer can read these particular files. Well, the way that you want to minify a JavaScript file is to actually make it look more like this. So this removes all the comments, all the white spaces, and it makes the JavaScript file much smaller. And lots of times, if you run it through certain tools, it'll actually um, improve the, the, the performance of the JavaScript itself. So you'll want to make sure that your JavaScript files are minimized. Now avoid CSS imports, that just means making sure that this particular attribute is not in your CSS tag. Inline small JavaScripts, this is exactly the same thing as inline small uh, CSS. Um, specify a cache validator. Now this particular setting and specify a, ver a very ex uh, except encoding header are very similar except for this one takes place um, usually with proxy servers so I'm not going to go into a lot of details with those um, but in the next video like I said we'll have some resources to make sure that these are addressed 
Now minify CSS, this one's going to be the exact same thing that we saw with the uh, JavaScript. So you click on one of these guys and you'll see just, you know, a little, a little amount of a CSS. They're just saying, hey, take this particular file and get rid of all the white spaces and make it look, you know, bam, so that it's just really streamlined. Now the next one is serve scaled images. And this one is just saying, hey, if you have a 300 by 300 image, don't set the width and height of that image to 100 by 100 because is what you're doing is effectively you're sending a much larger image down the pipeline with, that has a much larger payload. So they're saying shrink that image up and send them exactly what they're trying to look at. Um, now, put CSS in the document head. This is just a programming technique for making sure that your CSS calls are up in the head tag. Optimize the order of styles, styles and scripts. This is just saying, hey, you know, make sure that the style tags and your script tags are uh, placed appropriately in the head. And usually you want to make sure that all your style sheet references are above your script references. So remove query string from static resource. Um, this one is actually, um, you don't really want to mess around with this too much and it, actually it's kind of a difficult one to, to gauge, but they're just saying that if the resource behind this query string, say like a JavaScript file, is a static file, in other words it's dynamic and doesn't change, then you may want to try to get rid of removing this query string because some proxy servers, um, if they see a query string, they'll automatically um, not cache it because they're assuming that it could be dynamic content. In other words, it might be changing behind the scenes. So that's something that you'd uh, definitely uh, want a programmer to look at and, and evaluate if you can. So with that said, I hope that you have been able to get a high level overview of some of the terminology that is used on the page speed analysis tool. Remember that site speed optimization is very important these days and that you have to think about your themes, your plugins, the sizes of your image and everything you put together in your content. So stay tuned to part two in this series, the need for speed where I'll be running through some strategies that you can implement to reduce the overall bandwidth cost to your site and techniques that you can use to improve the overall performance of all these particular suggestions that we've just ran through. So take care and have a blessed day.